All right, so, you know, what this recipe calls for an eighth of a teaspoon, but I'm just going to go ahead and grate it across to whatever you're liking. Is This is a micro planer. These are a really great thing to have. They have different um, sizes of the blades. Um, ow, and I just almost did my finger. I'm going to put that in. Mm, I love the smell of nutmeg. Okay, salt, pepper, nutmeg. Okay, that's done. And I'm just going to let this sit. And it does start to absorb a little bit of this milk. Now, I'm imagining that if you did this in the blender, it would all obviously be much more mixed in together. But when I made this earlier, what happens is you just get a little bit of an egg ring at the bottom, but it's totally fine. Um, I just didn't feel like blending it up. So, I'm going to actually use my spatula. Where would my spatula be? If I was a spatula, oh, there I just Get yourself a big spatula. It's nice for that. Okay, now we're gonna do the egg white. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Look how organized I am, huh? You like that camera guy? I got everything, I don't have to leave the set. Although everything's a bit messy. So this is gonna be three egg whites and one whole egg that we are gonna to mix together. And you can definitely do this in the KitchenAid if you want to. Um, I know a lot of you don't have a KitchenAid, so I thought I would do it in a mixer. Today, put that on. And I can never get this last one on. I don't know what the deal is. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have one whole egg, which goes into this bowl. Now, very important. They're putting an egg yolk in this egg white, so clearly, this is not like when baking, when your bowl has to be, well, your bowl should be clean, but when your bowl has to be absolutely clean, you don't want a speck of yolk in there because you want the eggs to climb up the side of the bowl. Well, I learned the other day in Williams-Sonoma when I was looking at some uh, gifts that you never, um, you never want to uh, do it in a glass bowl because if you put egg whites in a glass bowl, they don't climb up the sides. So I am, um, but and like I said, this has a yolk in it, so... It's not as important as it is in baking. Now this, oops, this gets an egg white. And of course you always need three bowls. You got egg yolk, egg white, egg yolk, and shell. I'm gonna save these um, because I'm gonna be doing some baking that has egg yolks. Yes, there's gonna be some fattening baking, but you know what? I feel like when you are watching what you eat, it's definitely important to have a day where you basically don't watch it, you sort of get to treat yourself. Okay, uh, boy, that is the messiest opening, my lord. Hopefully you'll do better than that. All right, so I got my three egg yolks, which is nice because you can count, and I got my whites. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick, get this off my hands. Don't go anywhere, I will be right back, I promise. All right, that's gone. The stuff's on. Oh, when do I put the cheese in? So let's put the cheese in here. Nutmeg, pulse blended. I gotta put the cheese in here. So this is this is a third a cup of Romano cheese. Um, now in this recipe, as you guys know, if you've watched me before, we like to use the part skin mozzarella because that is definitely one of the lowest fat cheeses. In fact, you can get a quarter cup of part skin mozzarella for just 80 calories. A third a cup of the Romano cheese is 165, but we're dividing it amongst five servings. So. The cheese also goes in here, and I think actually maybe that's why um, I still see a little bit more moisture than I did this morning. But you can see it's starting to get better, isn't it, guys? I hope so. Because I don't have any of the ones that I made this morning to, to show you guys a good one. So it has to be whatever comes out of the oven. All right, so we're just going to let that get there, and I'm going to blend these up. Um, these blend for about five minutes until they about triple in volume, and I actually set the timer. The recipe gives you the time, use it. So I'm going to mix this up.
Okay, I think that's about tripled in volume. Whoop. You know what, it's not going to get, there's egg yolk in here, so you're not going to get, if you, if those of you that are bakers, you're not going to get that um, really stiff egg white. That's about all you're going to get. You can see the yellow in it. And that actually took about, eh, took about three minutes, so it didn't quite take the five that the recipe said. That's okay. Hey, whoops. If somebody gives you the time, use it. It's a nice little check. All right, get rid of these beaters. All right, so now, ooh, hope they don't fall over. Now, we're just gonna fold the egg whites into here, but before I do that, I actually wanna take my pan out. I'm gonna get rid of this book. Here's one of the things I always do. Make sure you got everything in there before it goes in the oven. We didn't do the breadcrumbs, we did the garlic, right? We did the spinach, we got milk, cornstarch, I put the cheese in, salt, pepper, nutmeg, egg whites, and large eggs. Okay, done. So, now, so I don't burn myself, which we all know I can do. I'm gonna remove these limes. These are our set limes. They have absolutely nothing to do today with what we're doing. But we thought we'd give you a little color. All right. So actually gonna move this so you guys can see this. Tell you, no matter how big your kitchen is, you always want a bigger one. All right. I'm gonna put this, the hot tray on here. I don't put it on my cutting board because I don't want to score it. Now, obviously this is not what, hey Rosie, oop, I'm gonna burn her up. Uh, obviously this recipe did not call to use these, but I wanna try these. I'm gonna spray that one. I've already got my ramekin sprayed. The recipe had called for breadcrumbs in there, but I didn't do it. Now I'm gonna spray this. I don't know how many I'm gonna actually get out of that, but we'll see what happens. Woo! That'll probably be it. All right. Now, this is important when you're doing any kind of folding in, you always want to, um, you want to lighten up the mixture, so to speak, with about a quarter of what you made, which means before you really fold it all in, you just want to get the mixture used to having what you're adding in. This does look soupy, but we can only hope it all comes out well. Maybe I shouldn't have added that moisture. I do this all the time. And you know what? It's okay if you do it too. I always second guess myself while the whole process, and it usually comes out fine. But I'll tell you what, if you have guests that come over and you do it, just make them believe that that was the way it was supposed to be. They'll never know. So we're just gonna put these egg whites in here. And again, this isn't quite like uh, if you were baking, because again, this isn't supposed to be piled up high inside the pan. Uh, those of you that had spinach souffles, I mean, they're, they're sort of a little dense. We're getting some air in there. And now I'm going to put the rest in. And they've actually got the yellow of the yolk in there. Whoops. And again, use the biggest spatula you have to fold in stuff. All right, so. And I am, this is much soupier than I, but I think it's gonna be fine. It's all gonna be fine, because you know what, we got cornstarch in there, is gonna thicken it up. Um, just wanna make sure that this is well done. And again, if I blend it, we'll see what happened. Now, to do this, and there's the glass bowl I had, I'm gonna use this uh, little um, uh, soup, what are these called, you know what I mean, ladle, and I'm gonna ladle this in to here. All right, it's probably too big for those other ones, so I need a smaller one. And let's see what happens if we can, if we stick them in these guys. I mean, you basically have an egg mixture here, so I mean, in, in some senses, you're making like little, uh, little mini quiches, so. It should be fine. We'll see. This definitely is soupier than this morning. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, maybe I did not bring out as much moisture as I should have, but that's what happens when you cook trial and error. So we'll push that. And it says to even actually smooth out the top. So you know that you're actually not Ooh, I'm making a mess. Finish these off. 
So you know that you're not supposed to be piled high. I'm going to get the rest of this on here. Okay. Now, the recipe called for this to go in the oven for 40 minutes, but that's because they did it into a baking tray. I'm actually going to do less than that um, because they're in these little things, and Lord only knows what these are going to come out to look like. So they should be fine. It's all good ingredients go in. She'll be all good ingredients going out. So I'm going to put these in the oven, back in the rack for 30 minutes. And I'm remembering to use my pot holders. We're gonna look at that. I've never used this tip. Boy, this is heavy, this cast iron thing. So in they go. These are raw. And we'll see what happens. Put your timer on for 30 minutes. The timer will always save you when you get distracted. Trust me. All right, 30 minutes. So if you are cooking along with me, go ahead and pause the video and click back on about 25, 26 minutes or so when your things are almost done and uh, we'll let you know exactly what they should look like when they come out of the oven, if in fact this is all gonna work out. All right, we'll be back. All right, so welcome back. We've got our spinach souffles in the oven. There's about two minutes, 2.20 left. I'm gonna go ahead and check it. Unfortunately, my oven light burned out, which let me tell you is a horror show, because I like to look in. So here's what we've got. Now you wanna make sure that the that the middle is firm, so you want to push on it a little bit. And actually, these are all really firm. Um, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and take it out because, as you all know, I'm a big fan that everything cooks afterwards, so I like it to cook off heat, and I don't want a dry spinach souffle. And these are going to sit in here. So I'm going to pull this out of the oven. Ouch. Urgh. Try not to burn myself. And look how it's rising out of the bottom. So, I mean, that's actually, that's fine. Now, those of you that like things that are cooked a little bit more, um, you know, or, or you just really like your eggs well cooked, then you could probably keep those in longer. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that these are done. So now we're going to let these sit. It's very important that these sit for at least five, six, seven minutes. But they're gonna, ours are going to sit longer because we're actually going to go do the salmon. So I'm going to adjust the oven rack to um, just below the broiler. Actually, let me see what I'm going to do here, actually. I can't remember if it's the closest one or the second closest one. Let's just do the closest one. If we get another fire, we get another fire. All right, so we'll do, so that's there. I'm gonna turn the oven on broil and get that ready to go. And now we're gonna start the salmon. 